Hey everybody, welcome to this fourth video in our sponsored series in partnership with JetBrains. Today, I'm thrilled to take you through some of the amazing debugging features in C-Line, which is the powerful IDE that I use for C and C++ development. Debugging can be one of the trickiest parts of programming, but with C-Line, this process has become more efficient, intuitive, and fun. The exciting thing about this tutorial is that I'm only scratching the surface of all the things that you can do. The feature set for debugging with C-Line is so deep, and this is really the tip of the iceberg just to help you get started. Before we dive in, I'm excited to share that the latest version of C-Line is out now, and it includes major enhancements like the all new C-Line Nova engine, support for embedded and remote debugging servers, and even an updated OpenCV viewer for image processing workflows. Be sure to check out all the details using the link in the description below. And now, before we start, here's a quick message from our sponsor. All right, so here we are in C-Lion. And what I've done for this example is just create a simple for loop that goes from zero to 9,999. And then I have a separate variable K that is just that value J multiplied by three. So we can inspect the value of each of these variables through different points of the program. So what we first need to do if we want to debug is we need to build uh, in debug mode. The way that we do that is just going up here to the top and you see three different buttons. You have the hammer, which is just for building the application. You have the play button that's for running the application. And then you have debug mode, which is for debugging. And what we do is just hit this debug build here. And this will allow us to set breakpoints. So to set a breakpoint, uh, what you would do is go over here to the left on the line number, and then you can just click in this um, on the line number that you want to set the breakpoint for, and it will stop execution of the program at the line that you want to suspend. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it here after K has been J uh, uh, has been calculated to J times three. And then that will suspend what the uh, what the value of these is at um, this point in the application. So down here at the very bottom, we have our inspector window where you can see um, the value uh, our different objects and our different variables and the value of each one of those. So you have some like this class uh, that contains an audio processor that has a whole bunch of different attributes. And we can look at what those are just by clicking this little down arrow. And then we can also look at the value of J and K as well here in the inspector window. On the left hand side, you have um, what is your stack trace. So if we had multiple, um, multiple function calls that were happening, those would be um, those would be here in your call stack. But in this case, we're only calling this uh, the single function that's being called by itself. So uh, one thing that I really like about CLion is that you can see the value of each of these variables in line. So as you can see here, right beside each one of these lines, you have the, uh, the value of each one of the variables, J and K. And for more complex objects, like we have with this audio buffer object, what I can do is I can actually click on this in line and it has a little drop down window. And then I can see the value of that in line without needing to go back and forth between the main, um, the main window and the console down at the bottom. So that's, that's really handy as well. And you can just, uh, you can just drop down, inspect the values of each one of these, and it's really handy. So that's what you do with a basic uh, breakpoint. Now what we can do is without needing to rebuild, we can actually just right click in here 
and we can do some different things. So one thing that we may want to do is we may only want to uh, hit the breakpoint if a value is at a certain place. So let's say that we wanted K to be more than, uh, let's say, 50, right? So what I could do is I can actually input um, some conditions here. So if K is more than 50, then we will, we will suspend, okay? Uh, only if K is more than 50. So you can do simple, pretty simple stuff, simple but effective. And so what I will do is I will go over here to the bottom left where I have my controls for how uh, I'm using my debugger. So I have uh, the play button that is just to resume the program as it, um, as, as it was going. Step over to step over line by line, step into to step into the function and step out to, uh, to step back out of the function. So I'm going to go ahead and resume program. And what we should look for is that the K does not, um, K does not cause this breakpoint to, uh, to pause this program until it's more than 50. So we'll go ahead and resume the program. And now we see that we've hit this breakpoint. Now that K has hit 51. Okay, so we can so we can do that, and we could do all of this without needing to go up here and stop and rebuild and everything. So another thing that we could do is if I just uncheck suspend execution, what I can do, let's say that I don't want to suspend execution of the program, and instead I would like to uh, to log in our console that the breakpoint's been hit. So I can do that as well. And so what I'll do is I will hit done. And then let's go over here to the console and then I will hit play. And now we see that we are getting this breakpoint reached, okay? which is, which is very handy. Uh, one of the only things is that we don't see what the value of K is at this particular point. So what I could do is I can go in here back into my log. If I wanted to, I could figure out what the stack trace was at that particular point. I can do, a, um, I can actually log a value if I wanted to. So let's say I wanted to figure out what the value of K was at this particular point where the breakpoint is reached. And so what I could do is I could just hit evaluate and log, and I just want to log what the value of K is at this particular point. I'm going to hit done. And so here we have uh, a paused execution. And what I can do is I can actually have it where it does not suspend the execution. Um, so let's see what I did there. So let me just go ahead and hit play again. And now if I stop this program and then we scroll up, what we see is that now we have some more information about what's happening. So I think that it intentionally hit that break point because I wanted to now log the, uh, log what the value of K was. So here we can see a lot of very helpful information in our console. We can see the stack trace of what uh, what the function call was when the breakpoint was hit. So if the stack, if the call stack was more complex than this, then you would see the various uh, function calls all, stat, all uh, one after the other here. Then uh, the breakpoint was reached at line 137 and then we can see what the value of k was at that particular time so all very handy stuff so now if we go here and we do this again and i can suspend the condition i'll hit done and once again it just pauses that because it's just saying okay we need to just re resume this program again and now i've done that and um, another, another handy thing that we can do here is we can actually look at the memory view of, uh, of our objects or of our variables. So let's say that I wanted to just look at what the memory view of J is, which is just an integer. So what I could do is I could do the ampersand uh, J 
and view that. And I can actually view the memory of what that is, right? So if we wanted to look, uh, so if we had some problems with, let's say, memory alignment, this would be a place where we could actually inspect and see how, uh, how our memory is actually being allocated. So let's look at a slightly larger object here. Let's say that we wanted to look at this buffer object. So instead of ampersand J, we could say ampersand buffer, and we can look at where that memory is allocated. And all of that is in uh, hex format there. And we can see what the values are um, there. So that is a very handy uh, way that you can actually inspect uh, what's happening within your application in various different views. Another really useful feature of scene line that I use a lot is what's called a watch point. So for this example, I'm using a more complex application where I have uh, something similar to game states, where it's an application state that has several states, uh, which such as choose app type, setup, load, play, and end. And then I have another class where it triggers a callback when I am switching states. So when the state is supposed to change, it triggers um, this listener, and then it changes the state of the application. So one thing that may be helpful to monitor in an application like this is the state, right? So the way that we would do this is I've set up a breakpoint to trigger when this listener is executing. And now I'm gonna go ahead and build this in debug mode. And now it's going to go ahead and hit this breakpoint because it needs to initialize the application state. And as we can see in the application window here, that uh, it's just waiting to, uh, to set up the screen. So what I can do is I can set up this state as a, uh, as a watch point. So the way that I would do this is I would right click and I would select new watch. And so what I wanna do is monitor what the state is at any particular time in this program. So the way that I would do that is I would call state. So another thing that's really handy is that you have a uh, autocomplete here in, inside this window. And I'm do, going to do state.get just to get what the state of the app is. And so now it's going to collect the data and we can see that the state of the app right now is choose app type. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and resume the program. And now, as you can see what I do, what I have here is I have the state.get is a watch point. So I can actually inspect this whenever this hits one of these breakpoints and see what's happening with the state, what state that we're in. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the launch button on this application to change the state. And now we can see that the state has changed to setup. And we've once again paused at this breakpoint. And what I can do is, is I can resume the program. And then now I'm in a uh, setup stage. And now if I hit this arrow down here at the bottom right, it will change the state again and we can do load state, right? So another very handy thing that we can do here is that I can actually uh, modify what I want to happen with when one of these, when something happens. Uh, and I won't demonstrate this, but I'll just show you where you can find it. So if you go down here to add data breakpoint, then you can have different things happen when your uh, within your within your watch, right? So you can have it, you can enable it or disable it. You can suspend the execution or not. Um, you can have it um, do the same thing that we were doing earlier, where it logs that the breakpoint was hit and what the stack trace is at any particular time. So there's a lot of very handy things that you can do with this app. Um, when you're using watch points uh, to monitor your data throughout the lifetime of your application. 
So there you have it. And as I mentioned before, the things that I've mentioned are just the tip of the iceberg. So one example of a deeper feature that may be useful for some of you is support for both GDB and LLDB debugging backends. So that's very handy, especially if you're working cross-platform on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Another thing is that you can use uh, remote debugging as well. So if you're working on an embedded device or working on a remote system, C-Lion's remote debugging support makes it super simple to connect and debug your application from anywhere. If you're as impressed by C-Lion as I am, I invite you to give them a try. You can check out the link in the description below or download a trial. Thanks for watching and as always, happy coding. See you next time.